Hi, this is Trey, part two, freedoms and evolution. Okay, you obey tyrants. As long as you obey the tyrants, no one is free. And we are at the point of the return of moral powers. I must have stepped on this fungus. There's all kinds of crazy fungus here now, man. But to have some people walk up on me looking for shrooms. Okay, so um, again, as I've said before, um, leaving this dark period, uh, we got to leave behind these astral parasites. Okay, it's a sad fact of reality that this concept of the antiverse. And um, the Zeta's um, ability to, to feed off your being, your acting all upset, causing you to actually, causing us to fight each other and then feeding off the energy. But again, through self-discipline and discernment, self-respect, self-love, you can put a stop to it. It might take a lot of, a lot of work with, with some of you people, but uh, you can do it. it. Ain't no joke. And that being said... Um, Again, you, you don't identify yourself as the warons. Um, we, have, um, we have our habits and instinct. I had this concept of a, a book or a, another video and the, the God self versus the habit mind, you know, and so this is a this is how we we have to defeat um, if we have any negative habits that stand in our way of freedom uh, we have to allow the Almighty to help us defeat that. But there's such a thing as good and bad acquired tastes like a beer doesn't taste good at first, right? Tobacco, liquor, first one first time it doesn't doesn't taste good, right? You know why? Because it isn't good. Okay, so um. At least as far as I'm concerned. So as far as uh, the worried issue goes, sternly deciding not to worry. That's the key. This occurred to me a minute, a moment, a few moments ago when I was preparing for this video. When these parasites or my, just my mental fear attempted to, to cause a distress. And I just, again, it takes some meditation and some practice, but you can learn to sternly decide not to worry. That's what it takes often. Okay, we're dealing with issues here also of continuity and consecration. Okay, so that's other videos we got to make in the future. Um, you know, we have to to know what our life stands for, what it means, our entire life. What is it? The point. And um, like when my brother, it was part of it was reproducing, and uh, so people, some people achieve their goals of continuity. For me. YouTube is, is a wonderful blessing to for me to share my ideas and my music with you. I have a place that's that's easy to share it with the world. So um, I wrote this last thing on this I got from from Keith and um, this says our freedoms are under threat if we do, do not act now. There are nefarious global agendas behind the declaration of the lockdown mandates these damaging actions were designed to financially benefit a certain you know etc and um planet lockdown and this is coming from um i gotta big up these people because it may be a tiny minority, but we have people here in Santa Cruz who are, like myself, willing to, to stand up. And um, stand up for freedom. I would submit to you this morning that what is wrong in the world today is that, nat is that the nations of the world are engaged in a bitter, colossal contest for supremacy. And if something doesn't happen to stop this trend, 
I'm sorely afraid that we won't be here to talk about Jesus Christ and about God and about brotherhood too many more years. If somebody doesn't bring an end to this suicidal thrust that we see in the world today, none of us are going to be around because somebody's going to make the mistake through our senseless blunderings of dropping a nuclear bomb somewhere. And then another one is going to drop. And don't let anybody fool you. This can happen within a matter of seconds. They have a 20 megaton bomb in Russia right now that can destroy a city as big as New York. In three seconds, with everybody wiped away in every building. But we can do the same thing to Russia and China. But this is why we are drifting. And we are drifting there because nations are caught up with the drum major instinct. I must be first. I must be supreme. Our nation must rule the world. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. And I'm going to continue to say it to America because I love this country. Too much to see the drift that it has taken. God didn't call America to do what she's doing in the world right now. God didn't call America to engage in a senseless war in Vietnam. And we are criminals in that war. We have committed more war crimes almost than any nation in the world. And I'm going to continue to say it. And we won't stop it because of our pride and our arrogance as a nation. But God has a way of even putting nations in their place. The God that I worship has a way of saying, don't play with me. He has a way of saying, as the God of the Old Testament used to say to the Hebrews, don't play with me, Israel. Don't play with me, Babylon. Be still and know that I am God. And if you don't stop your reckless course, I'll rise up and break the backbone of your power. And that can happen to America. Every now and then I go back and read Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. And when I come back and look at America, I say to myself, the parallels are frightening. And we have perverted the drum major instinct. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church, February 4th, 1968. The attitude above all others, which I feel sure is no longer valid, is the arrogance of power. The tendency of great nations to equate power with virtue and major responsibilities with a universal mission. The dilemmas involved are pre preeminently American dilemmas, not because America has weakness that others do not have, but because America is powerful as no nation has ever been before and the discrepancy between its power and, it, and the power of other, others appears to be increasing. We are now engaged in a war to defend freedom in South Vietnam. Unless the Republic of Korea, South Vietnam, unlike the Republic of Korea, South Vietnam has an army which is without notable success and a weak dictatorial government which does not command the loyalty of the South Vietnamese people. The official war aims of the United States government, as I understand them, are to defeat what is regarded as North Vietnamese aggression, to demonstrate the futility of what the communists call wars of national liberation, and to create conditions under which the South Vietnamese people will be able to freely determine their own future. I have not the slightest doubt of the sincerity of the president and the vice president and the secretaries of state and de defense in propounding these aims. What I do doubt, and doubt very much, is the ability of the United States to achieve these aims by the means being used. I do not question the power of our weapons and the efficiency of our 
efficiency of our logistics. I cannot say these things delight me as they seem to delight some of our officials, but they are certainly impressive. What I do question is the ability of the United States or France or any Western nation to go into a small, alien, undeveloped Asian nation and, and create s stability where there is chaos. The will to fight, to create the will to fight where there is defeatism. Democracy where there is no tradition of it. An honest government where corruption is almost a way of life. Our handicap is well expressed in the pungent Chinese proverb. In shallow waters, dragons become the sport of shrimps. Early last month, demonstrators in Saigon burned American jeeps, tried to assault American soldiers, and marched through the streets shouting, Down with the American imperialist! While one of the Buddhist leaders made a speech equating the United States with the communists as a threat to South Vietnamese independence. Most Americans are understandably shocked and angered to encounter such hostility from people who by now would be under the rule of the Viet Cong, but not for the sacrifice of American lives and money. Why, we must ask, are they so shockingly ungrateful? Surely they must know that their very right to parade and protest and demonstrate depends on the Americans who defended them. The answer, I think, is that fatal impact of the rich and strong on the poor and weak. Man, that line just says it, huh? Dependent on it, though the Vietnamese are, our very strength as a reproach to their weakness, our wealth as a mockery of their poverty, our success a reminder of their failures. What they resent is the disruptive eff effect of our strong culture upon their fragile one, an effect which we can no more avoid than a man can help being bigger than a child. What they fear, I think rightly, is that traditional Vietnamese society cannot survive the American economic and cultural impact. The cause of our difficulties in Southeast Asia is not a deficiency of power, but an excess of the wrong kind of power, which results in a feeling of impotence when it fails to achieve its desired ends. We are still acting like the Boy Scouts dragging reluctant old ladies across the street they do not want to cross. We are trying to remake Vietnamese society, a task which certainly cannot be accomplished by force and which probably cannot be accomplished by any means available to outsiders. The objective may be desirable, but it is not feasible. U.S. Senator J. William Fulbright, 1966. Okay, these, this book is a wonderful book. I highly recommend for anyone interested in this subject. And I, I beg the man's forgiveness if he's offended that I put it, but um, John Nichols put this together, and it's an amazing collection of quotes from everyone, from Native American chiefs, African American, and, and a handful of senators and presidents and um, governors who had the courage to tell the truth and speak truth to the beast. Because we don't want a beast running our lives. And now we have the exact opposite Ironic, ironically, the exact opposite issue. The Chinese communists, the Black Suns, the Nazi party is, you know, infiltrated so well here that they're threatening to turn California and the whole U.S. continental, or actually all 50 U.S. states into something similar to Chinese communist. Okay, so we all have to say no peacefully as much as possible to that. And... Like I say, with the with the course of food, cannabis, CBD, things that are not um, controlled by these criminals, we see evolution, and evolution will come, and freedom will come. God bless you, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Peace.